Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was the heists of the Pink Panthers. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page, our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, as well as directly on the video on Bun. On Bun! Today we're also going to be answering a video question and reviewing some of your guys, not reviewing, but appreciating <laughs> some of your guys' fan art. It's a blustery, blustery day out here. We thought it would be a good idea to shoot this outside and it's very windy and a little bit cold. It's permanently turned Shane into Robert De Niro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start from YouTube. This comes from Sarah Kani. Hashtag postmortem. If you guys were to start a heist group, what were your name be and what luxury item would you guys target? Holy shit, your hair. <laughs> uh, what would we be? What would we be? Did we say something in the episodes like the slippery snakes or something? The worm boys? We slide into a little store, like a worm on our slippery little bellies, and we take uh, all the jewels and, and precious gems, and we slide on out. And we're wet and slippery. Don't say cover, we're wet. Cover ourselves in uh, like a juice. You look like an insane person right now, <laughs> by the way. You look like you might be accosting me outside of a Dunkin' Donuts. That's fair. The Burgurglers. Why is it just you? The Burgurglers? Yeah, you come up with something better. I like it. I'm the Burgurgler. Burgurgler and the Worm. Another precious jewelry store was hit by Burgurgler and the Worm. Uh, what are you, you going to target? Target? Yeah, we should just target targets. Target, target. That seems like Easy. Insane. Yeah. Uh, Next let's... question will go to Gramtown. From Katie Elser, Shane made it pretty clear he wouldn't break Ryan out of prison. But would Ryan break Shane out of prison? Would I break Shane out of prison? Yeah, I think I would. Oh, that's very kind of you. What am I in for? Robbery? You kidnapped the Target CEO. I'm assuming that you landed in prison because you got caught and I slipped away because that's what the Burgurgler does. Next question. Let's go to Facebook. This comes from Rebecca Romanski. She says, sounds like a group Ricky Goldsworth would associate with. Also good thing the Ghoul Boys didn't find Fenn's treasure or they'd be prime targets. Hashtag postmortem, hashtag Ricky Sticky Fingers. That's pretty good. Ricky Sticky, they call, or Sticky Ricky, I guess. Sticky Ricky. Old Sticky Ricky. Sticky Ricky's good. <laughs> <laughs> I like Sticky Ricky. <laughs> it also uh, feeds into the, the murderous aspect, because like he'll stick you with a knife. That's true, I could do that. Little Sticky Ricky. I'd also like that if I had like very sticky hands, like you know, like the like the, the things that wide receivers in the NFL put on. Like uh, the, the- Do they do that? Stick them. Is that allowed? Em? They could put glue on their hands? It's not like glue, it's called like stick them. I could walk around a Target and just stick things in my hands and like yeah, because there's no other way you could grab stuff at target no it's everything <laughs> with your uh, opposable thumb and such <laughs> i'm just gonna cover myself in glue and then just walk by <laughs> just roll through the just Christmas roll through aisle <laughs> and just roll through aisles at target and have a bunch of pots and pans hanging off of me. Ooh, it's blustery huh? you just got hit with a chill down your spine well initially there's a lot of sunshine around here and we said okay. oh dear jesus that's fine we said well we're not gonna <laughs> shoot in the sunshine it's a lot of dust oh it's the dust <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the next question, Shane. Yeah, I got one for you here. For postmortem, what do you think the Pink Panthers are doing during quarantine? Robin. Burglar. Yeah, probably, probably more heists. That's I the would thing. Say that that's what they do. You know, less people are out at the jewelry stores. Prime burglin time. Uh, this comes from at I think they're four gram. It's pretty good. Uh, are jewelry stores generally well insured? If so. Do you think it's possible that they hired the pee, pee posse to rob them, fence the jewels, and split the profit slash insurance, uh, hashtag Shaniac? I mean, what do we look like, insurance agents over here? <laughs> you kind of do you when know? you have a big map in your hand and you're like... <laughs> I don't know how... how what We're kind zoning. Of, I don't know what jewelry stores got going on. <laughs> I think it's a goner, man. You might want to yeah, just I'll let just it go. Yeah, I'll just set this down. Just let it go. Just let, let nature take it back. Okay. Yeah, maybe it was an insurance scheme. I don't think so. I mean, some of the hauls that they took from these uh, jewelry stores were upwards of $20, 30000000 million. Yeah, it's embarrassing. Right? I can't imagine the insurance would cover that much. Also, if you own like a fancy jewelry store like that, what do you need an insurance fraud for? No, right? you just sell the... You're selling millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of precious gems. I think your interest as a jewelry store owner would be to sell jewelry. Yeah, but I don't know. Look, maybe. maybe. We're idiots. We don't know. This is from Gramtown Goodnight Hawk says, as far as the crap wig goes, Shane was close. It's called Dazzle Camouflage. 
while you're focusing on that rockabilly dead ferret sitting on their head, you're not focusing on their facial features. Now, I saw this argument in the YouTube comments, and that actually makes sense. That's what I said in the episode. You did not say that in the episode. Yes, I did. You said I you're think distracted by the out. wig, and then you just said, while they're looking at the wig, then you pull out your gun. Yeah, but they're also not focused on anything else. We had this discussion. I don't think the full discussion made it into the episode, I but I said- We had the discussion. We did. No, we didn't. Look at the fucking tape. Oh, do we not have the tape? Yeah. The we don't have the tape. <laughs> it is a good point that if you're looking at that wig or some funny thing, you're not gonna look at their facial features. Yeah. I mean, in that case, it's like, just wear a mask. But I guess you want to get in there and toe the line. Because if you wear a mask outright, you enter the store and they're like, that guy's gonna rob us. Nobody wears a baby mask. Whereas if you show up with a weird wig, they might be like, that's a weird looking guy. He's probably here to buy some jewelry. Still doesn't seem like they're very subtle. One of their methods was to crash a car through the fucking front window. That's not very subtle. So uh, maybe you do just walk in there with a mask. You save yourself a car, yeah. possible uh, neck injury because of the airbag scenario on yeah. those rental cars. Who knows how it is? All right, let's go to YouTube here. This comes from uh, Jacob Rengen, hashtag postmortem. What if the Pink Panthers were used in the Gardner Museum heist? I don't know, seems like familiar flair for the dramatic. They also steal art. Uh, I do not think the Pink Panthers uh, did the Gardner Museum heist. I think that one was a little more calculated. I think the style was much different. They were a little bit more into disguises and actually being a little more secretive, whereas like the Pink Panthers seem much more like a machine that just kind of knows to get in, get out quick, drop all the funny stuff. You want to watch the video question? Sure. If we could hear it, it might be a little tough because it's quite windy out here. Hi, it's Sun, and I did not know how to fit my theory in one minute, so you're going to have to suffer through a rap about it. I'll do a quick rap to explain my theories. I think they were film buffs very clearly. I think that I caught up in the love for the movies from the old beloved Pink Panther series. And I know cops were the ones who came up with the name, but they weren't the ones who came up with the game of hiding the diamonds in the cream, striving for that authenticity. They did this and some people wonder why. I think it was a group costume gone awry. Some stands go hard caught up in the joys, but are you real fan if we don't heist with the boys? Shout out to Bukaras not to be too loud, but I love you both. So much sun out. <laughs> Damn, dude. She's got bars. She's got some rhythm. She really dropped the mic at the end there. She's also very, uh, a lot of rhythm to be able to do that. It's almost like an Anna Kendrick cup song. Oh, yeah. When I'm gone, you're gonna miss my cups. You're gonna miss me by my cups. Now you really do seem like you should be outside of a Dunkin' Donuts just <laughs> singing that to yourself. When, when I'm, I'm gone, gone, you're gonna miss me by my cups. You're gonna miss me by my taco. <laughs> hey, can I get a old fashioned? <laughs> This is a Dunkin' Donuts, sir. Oh, uh, man, maple cream. <laughs> Whoa. Holy smokes. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you for the wraps on. Uh, let's look at some fan art. Here's our first one from Cheerios Uwu. That looks like a, a reimagining of the season promo image. It does. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an, a complete replication of it. What in terms on earth of like... could that be referencing? I didn't quite uh, grasp it. Did we reveal what it is? We didn't, right? we, we did it yet, no. Okay. No. Uh, this it, image- Why did it take you so long to understand what was happening? I think it's because there was dust in my eyes. Oh, that's my mouth <laughs> And my eyes. That's true. I feel like one of the weathermen that's out on location and they're trying to communicate with people back in the studio. That sounds great. It's a good day out here. Back to you in the studio, Dan. <laughs> we got some art. <laughs> well, here's another one that's very uh, topical from uh, Sophie Lofi. There's Ryan up in the air being taunted by ghosts and me saying, hmm, crazy wind we're having. It could be also a reference to me farting in your face, it looks like. Oh, maybe. You do make that face every time you fart. That's true. It's you like, go, what's happening? Why? <laughs> My butt cheeks. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. This comes from at formal Pegasus. And looks like this is us from the Pink Panther episode. It sure is. With really the proper cool, attire and everything. A really cool diamond. Good art. Thank you to Formal Pegasus. Thank you to Sophie uh, Lofi. And thank you to Cheerios Uwu for the great fan art this week. Ryan, I have a question for you. Yeah. What is coming up on the next episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved with Ryan Vergara and Shane Madej? AKA Sticky Ricky and the Worm. Sticky Ricky and the Worm. Uh, what is coming up next that sounds week? sounds like a morning zoo DJ. <laughs> Welcome to the morning zoo with Sticky Ricky and the Worm. How you dorks doing? We got a mattress on the five. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. What is coming up this week, Ryan? Right? <laughs> what's happening? Oh. What's, what's coming up this ah. week? Answer the question. 
Uh, we got a really fun episode for you guys. We're gonna be talking about something that I would say is a uh, uh, magical, maybe. Oh, is that this week? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah, this episode kicks ass. And also, happy advance Halloween for all you uh, ghouligans out there. Yeah, celebrate responsibly, uh, social distance, yeah, etc. You know the drill. That does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the episode this Friday and then send in your questions to the BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, the BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page, as well as uh, commenting directly on the video on Bun and maybe you'll be on the next episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. <laughs> Bye, everybody. See you later. I'm going to just blow away now. Woo! <laughs>